Coming up, medical's about to expire. Will the SFAR be extended? We have the latest. Plus, a record flight and a one-of-a-kind sailplane. Putting two classics head-to-head. -head. And sisters share the magic of their first solo. AOK Live This Week begins in just a moment. Your plane is a valuable tool. With the Genesis Aerosystems s 3100 Digital Autopilot, you can rest assured you will arrive safely to your destination. The 3100 is the industry's most advanced autopilot for single and twin engine aircraft, providing exceptional workload reduction, safety enhancing capabilities such as straight and level mode and speed protection. To learn more, visit our website today. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Alyssa Cobb. Welcome to AOPA Live This Week, and it's still the home edition. Well, we're less than a week from June 30th, and medicals will expire for some of you. And because of the COVID-19 lockdown, you still haven't been able to get to an aviation medical examiner. Now, the FAA did put out a special federal aviation regulation, or SFAR, back in April, you remember, extending all expiring medicals until the end of this month. But now what? Lots of you have been calling our Pilot Information Center to find out, and here's what the FAA says. Uh, an extension is in the works. What, what we're hoping is that very soon, in, as we go through the summer, that we'll actually be sort of unraveling um, those extensions and getting people back into getting um, you know, getting their currency, getting their, getting their medicals. Um, but uh, yeah, we are, we are going to extend um, beyond May, beyond June 30th. Now, as we record this, still nothing official from the FAA about an actual extension. They're cutting it a little tight for sure, but you can bet this is a top priority for AOPA's team in Washington. Appreciate the support that the FAA did for the SFAR and doing the extensions for medicals and, and CFI and all the other things that have time-limited kinds of issues. And we're still going to say we're probably going to need to continue to look at that, uh, with whether it's a medical or if you're asking for you know, another 90 days. So I think we're going to probably need to take a look at that some more on some of those extensions. So that's, that'd be my number one issue right now. That was from an FAA town hall last week. You can read more about the SFAR extension and other things discussed during the town hall on our website. And pilots have been calling us about something else too. Some are complaining that they can't get through to a live briefer when they call 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Well, yes, Lidos, which runs flight service for the FAA, did change the menu prompts recently. Uh, the FAA is encouraging pilots to do self-service ahead of calling a flight service specialist. So we're helping incentivize callers by providing uh, increased priority when they do call. Uh, from a phone number that's listed in their 1-800-WX-BRIEF.com uh, website account. So if you have a Lidos account and the system recognizes your phone number, you get priority service. Your account has been located. Please press or speak your response at any time. You can press 1 or say briefer, press 5 or say special announcement. But if you don't have a Lidos account or you're calling from a different phone, like say from an FBO, you get a much longer message and several prompts before you get to a briefer. The phone number you're calling from is not linked to a website account. To receive expedited service and access to enhanced capabilities, please enter the 10-digit primary phone number associated with your website account. Or press the pound key if you don't have an account. Sorry, the phone number you entered is not linked to a website account. Press 1 to get help identifying your account, or press 2 to continue. You can press 1 or say briefer, press 5 or say special announcements. Now we shorten the announcement a bunch. So you can get to a live briefer finally if you listen to the whole message and press the right keys. Now you don't have to have a Lightus account to talk to a briefer, but there are advantages to having an account, which is free of course. We encourage pilots to create an account at 1-800-WX-BRIEF.COM um, or link their uh, participating third-party application to a 1-800-WXBRIEF.COM account. That account will link to our system and provide specialist information that they can provide more streamlined service when you do call. Another benefit is that our system does give priority to those callers that have taken actions ahead of the phone call. So if you use the 1-800-WXBRIEF.COM website or use a third-party application that links to your 1-800-WXBRIEF.COM account, you will get that increased priority for performing self-service actions such as filing a flight plan or uh, getting a, a standard weather brief online. Um, in the coming months, the phone system will enable users to perform simple actions such as activating or closing flight plans 
uh, or obtain an adverse condition update for those last minute checks before flight. And one of those flight planning apps that links to 1-800-WXBrief.com is our own iFlight Planner, free to AOPA members. Well, Tom, you know, a lot of us are so used to the instantaneous weather and filing flight plans through our EFBs and various apps that when we actually need to slow down and call a briefer, we want them right then. And uh, I know that the change in prompts uh, can be confusing, and, and that's why it's important to set um, that profile up so you can get through quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I've had one for a long time, and it really is helpful that recognizes your number and boom, you're right into the system. But I have also been around pilots who wanted to make a last-minute flight plan change, they, and they don't have an account, and they really have been stymied by that, that menu change. So uh, hopefully this was helpful to help people understand how they can get there ultimately to a briefer. But again, if you make an account, uh, it really does uh, speed things up and make it a lot more efficient. So there you go. But hey, what about this? A nose wheel cub. Who thought of that? Well, guess what? It's actually happening. Cub crafters decided to put their nose wheel NX cub concept into production. Last year, the company built a demonstration model of the airplane and flew it around the country to see how the market would respond to the idea. And after a lot of interest, cub crafters decided to move forward with production. The goal is to open up backcountry flying to more pilots. That's a good goal. With the NX Cub, you don't need to be an expert tailwheel pilot to do stall flying. AOPA editor-at-large Dave Hirschman took the NX Cub for a flight last year. You can find his review of it on our YouTube channel. And another aircraft update, Diamond Aircraft just introduced the new retractable DA50RG. The carbon fiber airplane has five seats. It's powered by a 300 horsepower Continental CD300 diesel engine, Burning Jet A. The airplane has a, get this, 181, not top speed, 181, folks, 750 nautical mile range, and it'll feature the Garmin G1000 NXI flight deck, FA certification, expected at the end of next year. Meanwhile, Italian company Technum just unveiled the design for a hybrid P2010. The goal is to test a hybrid power plant that can be scaled for use in larger aircraft. It consists of a Rotax 915, a 30 kilowatt Rolls-Royce electric motor and a battery pack. The electric motor is used as a starter and it provides extra power during takeoff and climb. The goal, reduce fuel consumption by 10 to 15% compared to a traditional power plant. Funding for the design comes from the European Union as part of a research project. Well, California company Airflow is working on an electric airplane project called the e -Stoll. The goal is to design an electric utility airplane that can take off and land in extremely short distances. The ESOL would use only 150 feet to take off or land. It's a twist on the eVTO urban air mobility concept. There are a lot of challenges to designing a vehicle that can take off and land vertically, so Airflow is going with a more traditional airplane design. Now the mission is to fly medium range cargo flights up to 500 miles. And future aircraft like the East Dole could have Honeywell avionics. The company just announced a new business unit focused specifically on developing technology for urban air mobility and drones. Now, the company believes these new vehicles will need sophisticated avionics and they want to provide them. Honeywell is one of many traditional aviation companies jumping into the EV toll business. Now, here's a really far out concept. NASA about to launch an electric helicopter to test powered flight on Mars. It's just one part of the 2020 Mars mission launching later this summer. The helicopter, called Ingenuity, will hitch a ride on the Perseverance rover. And once the helicopter detaches from the rover in Ma on Mars, it will perform a series of short test flights in the thin atmosphere of the red planet. The helicopter weighs just four pounds and is solar powered. Test flights on Mars start next February. And while many companies are working on integrating electric motors, a pilot in Nevada prefers flying with no motor at all. Jim Payne, a well-known glider, glider pilot, recently started flying a revolutionary new sailplane as part of the Nixus project and even broke some records while doing it. AOPA web editor Jim Moore has the story. Pilot Jim Payne was ready to pounce when favorable weather over Nevada's mountains created an opportunity to break a sailplane distance record in a one-of-a-kind aircraft. 
The record flight was nearly 600 miles long on a triangular route that began and ended in Minden, Nevada. The record broken, distance around a triangle, and speed around a triangle in a two-seat open-class sailplane flown in the United States. The weather turned out to be pretty good. I averaged 90 miles an hour around the triangle, which uh, beat my old speed record from 24 years ago by 12 miles an hour. So uh, we're pretty happy. It was a beautiful day and a beautiful flight. The sailplane he flew was built by the Nixus Project, led by Brazilian-born aerospace engineer and professor Paulo Iskold. Paulo built the sailplane with some hands-on help from his students at California Polytechnic State University in San Luis Obispo. And of course, when you tell a student, okay, the airplane that you have to build, you know, you put the carbon fiber on, you put the resin on, it set a record. That, that puts the student's uh, um, motivation super high. The Nixus Project Glider has a few defining characteristics that make it well suited to breaking records. The aspect ratio is 53.3, which is nothing less than the second biggest aspect ratio ever built in the aviation history. That means the wing is very long. Nixus has a wingspan of nearly 100 feet and it's extremely thin. The wing is so thin that you just can't fit the typical mechanical flight controls, so Apollo implemented a fly-by-wire flight control system. And Jim has his eye on other records in the Nixus glider, including the longest distance covered in a sailplane. Well, ultimately, um, I've done a 2,900 kilometer flight and wave. One of our goals is to fly over 3,000 kilometers in one flight. The team hopes the project will inspire students and others interested in aviation. We all have a kind of a drug that we addict to it. And aviation seems to be a really good one, get, get people out of trouble. And, and if we can use this to inspire young people to go that direction, I think that's, that's great, you know. Jim Moore, AOPA Live. You can read more about the Nixus Project and the record-breaking flight on our website. When we come back, two sisters solo at the same airport at the same time. And the Howard versus the Stagger Wing. We put these classic beauties against one another. We'll be right back. The future of USB charging power has arrived. Introducing new ultra-fast charging TA360 USB chargers. Unlock the power of USB power delivery PD technology. Max power. Multiple configurations. In-seat, cabin, cockpit, and galley USB power. Easy to install backed by the best. True Blue Power, the USB experts. Welcome back. Many consider the Beach Stagger Wing to be one of the most beautiful airplanes of all time. I'm probably in that camp. The classic to beat all classics. But does it beat all classics? AOPA Editor-at-Large Dave Hirschman takes the Stagger Wing head-to-head -head against the Howard DGA-15 to find out which one takes the lead in this classic fly-off. They were rivals then, now, and always. The Howard DGA and the Beach Stagger Wing were at the pinnacle of aviation technology during aviation's pre-World War II golden age. They were the Gulf Streams of their era, and they could fly as far, as fast, and provide greater luxury than the airliners of their day. But how do these two ancient rivals stack up in terms of pure performance? In this classic fly-off, we put the 450 horsepower Brutes to the test. Pat, we're about to go flying in these two magnificent classics. How do you think it's going to turn out? I'm going to win. You're going to win what? You're going to win the short takeoff? I'm going to win uh, it all. I will win it all. Dude, the Stagger Wing's a beautiful bird, but it's like it's got nothing on this this damn good airplane, Howard DGA-15, that's going up again. I mean, Howard is nice, and yeah, it gets my attention, but come on. Everybody knows the Stagger okay, Wing. Okay, so is. so there's a few rich people that like the Stagger <laughs> Wing, and I and, and I can see how you know it's dainty and it's refined tastes and and uh, and it is it's okay it's prettier I'll give you that, but it's like man the uh, like the Howard was a value yes and it's like do you think Queenie is twice the plane that, that the Howard is I want if I want a, a, a golden age classic 
I can't imagine more power and more more value and more performance than the Howard gives. It should be uh, pretty interesting to see how this works out. But, you know, like I told you before, you know, it's the airplane, you know, it does its thing. It's the pilot, you know, and you got a lot more time than I do. Oh, so don't, don't go play. Pass it on me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I just can't wait to see side by side, no nonsense. Let's just put the pedal to the metal and see how it turns out. You got it. I'm ready. Let's All do right. it, Dave. <laughs> First, a full power takeoff and climb. We take off in intervals, then race to join the Bonanza that's serving as our photo ship. With similar fuel and passenger loads and identical power settings, the two airplanes are dead even. It's a draw. Next, we set up for a wide open drag race. Okay, opening the power in three, two, one. I've got the lead, just match my altitude. Okay, you, you have got the lead, I'm matching your altitude. And say your airspeed is it, so just give me a running count of your airspeed. Okay, I got 165 miles an hour, 170. Is that all you have, Dave? Uh, I'm at 155. In terms of flat out speed, the Stagger Wing is a hands down winner. Next, slow flight. We decelerate to see which airplane stalls first. Okay, power's coming to idle. Okay, I break at 65. The Howard's controls get mushy at about 70 miles an hour with the flaps up and it stalls first. The result with flaps down is the same. The stagger wing wins the slow flight category two. How about roll rate? Okay, here we go, left. Yep. Rolling left now in three, two, one, go. Both airplanes have heavy ailerons, but the monoplane rolls more quickly. Advantage, Howard. Finally, it's time for a short field landing. Here, the stagger wing flies a slower final approach and rolls out in about 900 feet compared to 1,200 for the Howard. Advantage stagger wing. I gotta admit that it's like that was a pretty decisive outcome. The uh, you know I thought that I would be sticking with you, especially a bit, but and my my heart I did kind of sink when we did the speed run and I watched you pulled away because it's like uh, you it's gave like, your best shot. And, it, a, and it's, it's like, it, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a clean sweep. Okay. No, it wasn't a clean sweep. I mean, you know, it wasn't, but <laughs> honestly, I was kind of a, a little surprised. I really was. When I hit the throttle, I thought that you were actually going to keep up with me a little bit. And uh, what you did, you did forget to mention about my nice short field landing too. Oh gosh. I slipped my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, thanks man. Hey, Appreciate it. It was, it was great flying with great you. Great flying with you, Pat. Thank you very much. No, no problem. On a personal note, I'd like to say that this is how I'll remember Pat Napolitano, the irrepressible Staggerwing pilot. He passed away shortly after this video was made, and we in the aviation community miss him deeply. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. So, Alyssa, as Dave mentioned, uh, this is kind of a bittersweet story for us. Uh, I was involved in that photo shoot where we captured that amazing video, those two classic airplanes in flight. I was flying my Bonanza as the photo platform, and so it's incredible to see those two wonderful airplanes off of my wingtip uh, when we did that photo mission two years ago. But as Dave mentioned, sadly, it was only a few days later that uh, unfortunately, uh, Queenie uh, was in was an accident, and, and Queenie and Pat were, were both lost, and it was uh, just you know dreadful for all of us. I'd had the opportunity to fly Queenie with Pat a couple of years ago, uh, prior to that in, in Wichita, and it is just an incredible airplane, and he was so good with it. He was one with the airplane, and it was just absolutely his, his baby, and we were obviously very saddened by that accident, which still no real explanation about what happened there. Um, and so uh, anyhow, our condolences out to Pat's family and his colleagues and friends, uh, and he had so many around the country. He did. He, did. he, he was, was he was larger than life. life. I, I, didn't I didn't get to work, work with him as closely as you and Dave on that photo shoot, shoot but on some other projects, projects. and yeah. it was a big loss. Yeah. You know, and the vintage aircraft community is mourning another loss this week. Founder of the Antique Airplane Association, Bob Taylor, died last Saturday 
He was 95. He also co-founded the Air Power Museum, which was later moved to the Antique Airfield near Blacksburg, Iowa. Blacksburg is home of the annual Labor Day fly-in of antique and classic aircraft. You can read more about Bob Taylor's remarkable life on our website. I've had the opportunity to, to be out there at that airfield during that fly-in, and it is an amazing collection of antique airplanes and just what a great community. People camping and having a wonderful weekend, and, and obviously Bob uh, had a, a great part of making that happen, and he will definitely be missed in the antique air, airplane community. Yes, he, he definitely will. Well, a fitting tribute to an aviator who has made a big impact on aviation. 99-year-old B. Haydu is a woman Air Force service pilot and has dedicated her life to aviation. The women Air Force service pilots, or WASPs, paved the way for women in aviation flying military aircraft in World War II. And B. has been unable to leave her home because of the COVID-19 restrictions, but her pilot friends wanted to make sure she still felt appreciated. So they organized a flyover of her Florida nursing home. Around 20 pilots, many of them from the local Treasure Coast 99s, participated in the flight. It was such a great feeling to know that we were just there for her, to know, let her know that we, you know, we still admire and respect her and to thank her for all that she's done for women in aviation and aviation in general, not just women in aviation. It made us feel very special that we were able to bring that happiness and joy into Bee's life. And the 99s are hoping they can expand the flyovers to honor other wasps across the country. And I can't think of a more fitting tribute uh, or, or a way to make someone's day than to do a flyover. Now, it's one of those moments you'll never forget, soloing an airplane for the first time. But for sisters Allison and Macy Messonaire, the moment was extra special. They got to solo at the same time. The two have been learning to fly together at ACES Aviation at Beaver County Airport in Pennsylvania. And the sisters, along with their parents and flight instructors, were more than just a little excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a greaser! All right! Woo! I felt like I was on top of the world. Like, as soon as I lifted off, I was, like, cheering and talking to myself. I was like, I can't believe I'm flying a plane! And I was just going crazy, but it was such an insane moment and feeling. It was something that I don't think either of us have ever really felt before. We were just like really proud of all the hard work we put into flying and it's finally paying off. It was mm -hmm. just amazing. You can't really describe it. And the air traffic controllers help make the moment feel extra special. So I am about, I'm being the numbers on, on a left downwind mm -hmm. and they called me up and they said, Diamond 396, Juliet Alpha, um, follow your sister, your number two to land. And I was like, all right, I'm going to follow my sister, number two. And it's pretty cool because it's something we'll probably never forget. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Yeah. The sisters are also hoping to take their check rides together. Their dad is a Delta pilot, and the sisters are planning to follow in his footsteps and become airline pilots as well. And aspiring female aviators around the world will once again get to experience Girls in Aviation Day. But like many events this year, the event is going virtual. Girls in Aviation Day, hosted by Women in Aviation International, has gained a huge following over the past several years. Last year, for example, there were more than 20,000 participants. Now this year, the virtual event will take place on the new Aviation for Girls app. The app will have content like career panel videos, hands-on activities, virtual tours, and mentoring opportunities. Now, the new app will launch on Girls in Aviation Day on September 26th. After that, it'll be available year-round. Now, app users will even be able to apply for Women in Aviation scholarships. As summer gets going, let's head west. Here's some amazing videos sent in by viewers. This one comes from Glenn Dennis. It's a flight around southern Utah in a Cessna 170.
Thank you, Glenn, for sharing that beautiful scenery with us. Well, hey, that's our show for this week. We hope you'll share your thoughts with us. Yeah, and the address is on your screen. We'll see you next week. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft.